There is no better sign of God's involvement with a people than the love that they have for him and that they show to each other. And I, ha I have to tell you, it is a blessing to my heart to watch the fellowship of the people in this congregation when they come together. There's a genuine sense of enjoying each other's company, a caring about what's going on in your lives, a kindness, a sincerity, a generosity of spirit that is the epitome of God's love in our lives. And I, I just want to thank you for blessing me in that way because I know that it blesses the Lord to see the love flow in this fellowship. And over and over again, when new people come into our midst, they are remarkably impacted by that true sense of love that you guys have for each other and even show toward them when they're strangers. It's, it's honoring to God. So thank you for being faithful to love each other. Let's pray. Lord, as we gather today, we thank you, Lord, that it's your love that flows through us. You set the example. And you so love the world, Father, that you gave us Jesus. We're going to celebrate that gift today. And we are clearing our hearts of all things for him so that we will be focused on you today. As we prepare our hearts, Lord, we, we lift up words in song to you. And we mean those words. We don't just speak them. We pray that you receive them with the sincerity that they're offered, that you would be glorified and that we would be strengthened to walk according to your will. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Ascent Bible Church. And if you would like to stand with us, if you're able, we're going to praise God with some music. Psalm 42. There's a few verses in here that just really speak, spoke to me this morning, and uh, I, I just really think they speak to the salvation that we're all so grateful for. The, those of us that know Jesus and understand what he's done for us, it's such an amazing thing. We're going to be looking at that a little bit closer and what he does in our life and the, the way he changes us and the way he moves us and the way that he, he draws us close to himself. But Psalm 42, 5 says, why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation.
was one in the spirit lit the flame now this gospel truth of all shall not heal shall not faint by his blood and in his name in his freedom i am free for the love of jesus christ who has resurrected me
Father God, we believe that. We know you are true. We thank you that you did not just leave us to figure this out on our own, but you gave us your word, your truth. Father God, you are life. We are so thankful that we've had the chance to experience you and to know you. Your love is transformative in our life. were always there for me even when I was running, even when I was confused or hurt or angry. And those days I still find from time to time, God, but thank you that you never leave us or forsake us. Thank you that you pursue us relentlessly, God, because you love us and you have something so good for us. Father God, just pray that we would be ready to, to let you reveal that to us, God, and to embrace it, because everything that this world has to offer, it just withers away. It just breaks. It fades. Father, not you. You are everlasting. Amen. Your love endures forever, God. We just want to know you. We just want to thank you for who you are. I am ready. 
the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my
They close the sons and daughters. We are ransomed by our Father through the blood. The blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me Wow, what a set, huh? Praise God, yeah. Again, want to welcome each and every one of you to a, a very special, unique day in our church, Ascent Bible Church. Um, anytime we do have a month, again, just want to just, uh, by way of a reminder, anytime we have a, sun, a month with five Sundays in it, we always dedicate that fifth Sunday to, uh, to introducing you to a missionary, and uh, a lot of you will get to meet Diego this morning, who's been a part of this body for a long time, led our youth group for a couple of years before he headed off to Morocco. And then um, we're going to do what the, this song set was all about. We're just going to come together as a church and celebrate the Lord's table, the Lord's Supper. And um, I'll be laying out some thoughts, some things to consider before we do that uh, together. And then also... Uh, we have a little bit of our, our plates full this morning. Um, at the end of the service, we're going to recognize some folks uh, that have completed Discipleship One. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Um, we make a big deal out of it in our church just because um, those of you that um, are being discipled, you're mindful of the fact that you've got to put up with your disciples, your mentors. Uh, but no, just kidding. But it's always a good time to just recognize the the commitment, the faithfulness between the mentor and the disciple, and we'll be doing that. You'll get to meet the, the, uh, the latest crop, if you will, of uh, disciples. Um, Bernadette, you're a bit of an exception today because we put you on the slide, but we're not going to recognize you today just because um, that color of shirt that you're wearing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, Sylvia's not here. We just want you guys to be up here together because of... Um, that amazing connection. So just FYI, heads up, you will see Bernadette's name. She is finished, but uh, Sylvia's out this week. So we're going to wait on Sylvia and get you in at the next, I think my wife said April. April is the next month with five Sundays. Is that going to be okay? Yeah, that's okay. So we're going to give you a temporary certificate. Uh, it's a, uh, a rain check, actually. No, uh, but... Uh, but again, welcome each and every one of you. Before we get going, I just want to um, just uh, pray for someone in the back. Augusta's in the back in the slam room, not feeling very well at all. So let's just bow our heads and pray for her right now. And um, then we're going to talk about uh, uh, what we're going to do this morning. Father, we come before you just, uh, Lord, uh, just thankful, just grateful for you, Lord Jesus. And um, what we're about to consider this morning as a church as we look back um, 
to what you did for each and every one of us. And Lord, this is a special day at Ascent. And I pray, Lord, that as we come together this morning around your table, the Lord's table, to remember, Lord God, the ultimate price that you paid. Um, Lord, I pray and I thank you for the redemption that your blood brings. Lord, I just want to lift up our sister, our little sister Augusta to you now, Lord, and I just pray for some comfort, not sure what's going on physically in her body right now, but you do. And I pray, Lord, that you would just intervene even now and just bring some comfort and some, um, just some healing, Lord, as we gather here this morning. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Without further ado, I don't want to take up everybody's time, but we're going to bring Diego online, believe it or not, all the way in Morocco, eight hours ahead. Um, so with that said, I am not going to waste your time this morning. Where's David Duran? Is he already up there? <laughs> David's always on top of things. David, you want to come on up and just kind of let everybody know where we're at? Um, wasn't this past month an awesome month? I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited. I'm so excited about 2023. So what better way to kind of put a bow on this whole month with uh, what we're going to be hearing today, right? Uh, we cast our vision. I think we're there. I just want to thank the leadership team and how we were able to come together and allow the Lord to just reveal to us um, this amazing vision for 2023, preparing a people for the blessed hope is our theme. Uh, we're going to start with Thessalonians next week. I'm excited about that new series. Uh, but with that said, in terms of how we're looking and focusing on preparing and preparing the body of Christ, this, this church in particular, um, I want to remind you that we're all about God's mission. And his mission has four aspects to it from a geographical perspective, right? Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost. David oversees all our mission stuff, just so you guys know. You heard from him briefly last week, um, but he's going to kind of run the service this morning as he does and meets us up and connects us with Diego. All right, David, it's all yours. Thank you, Diego. Thank you, John. Um, no, I don't think I'll run the service, but I do want to uh, interview uh, Diego. And um, just to um, reiterate what John said about missions, um, Yes, we, everybody here, you know, who, many people here have been discipled, and that the discipleship um, is meant to, you know, grow uh, relationships between people. It's meant to, um, to teach the doctrines um, that we, that we know we get from the Word of God. And then we're to take that and then go out and do the same. That's what Jesus wants wanted for his disciples to do, right, to go out into the world. And so we're all missionaries in that regard, right? We all go out and into our lives uh, and workplaces and, uh, and our families and things like that. And, and that's where we share God's love. We share our love for God with our family, you know, and then we share our love for God with our friends. And, and by loving one another, caring for one another, um, that's how we give glory to God. And that's what our lives should be about, is bringing glory to God. And so um, that's everybody's, um, you know, that's what Jesus wants for all of us. So um, we're just being obedient to do that. And Diego is just happens to be more brave than me yeah, because he's uh, out in the world uh, in a foreign land in a, uh, probably a predominantly Arab country. Um, as a Christian, and um, he's working with the Peace Corps, and uh, it's just a wonderful opportunity for him to get a sense of how large the world is, and uh, and how the in many cultural, you know, uh, differences and such. So we'll speak with him now, and he can uh, enlighten us. So Jay has made connection with him. I hope. He should be showing up. And there's going to be like a five-second lag between my questions to him and his responses. And so uh, here he comes, <laughs> I think. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good morning or evening, Diego. <laughs> Good morning. 
Good morning. Here, before, before you go start asking questions, let me show you guys. Let me, let me show you guys where I'm at right now. This is the view from my, my little bedroom right here. Oops, it, 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 um, it's, I think it got stuck. Okay. It's not, there we go. It's starting to stream. Can everyone see that? Yes, it's a little blurry from our side, but that's probably the thousands of miles. Go ahead. Yeah, just tons of olive trees on the mountains nearby. It snowed yesterday, so I'm freezing, but yeah. <laughs> You got snow, is that what you said? Hello, hello. Hello. Do you do you hear are you hearing us? I can hear you guys now. Okay. Okay. So the town you're living in, could you give us uh, the name and uh, kind of the location? Yes. So I am in a city called Taza and it is north central Morocco. It's about three hours south of the Mediterranean coast and about an hour and a half east of Fez, which is a pretty major city here in Morocco. And um, is this uh, uh, like a, it's, you're, you're working with the Peace Corps, right? That's? Yes. Okay. And uh, is the Peace Corps, all over Morocco or just in that one particular place? So there are 50 other volunteers that are here in Morocco, all American, and we stretch all and up and down Morocco. The furthest person north, right on the coast, and the furthest person south, right towards where there's the Sahara, which is now considered Morocco according to um, the United States, but that's a whole different story. But <laughs> we're stretched all throughout Morocco. Okay, and how do you like uh, being with the Peace Corps so far? How's that working out? I absolutely love it. It is definitely the hardest job I've ever had, but it's definitely the best job I've ever had. It is incredible, and tons of work, very busy, and it definitely is redefining for me in my head what it means to work. <laughs> <laughs> your, your father is smiling over here. He's very happy to hear that. You know, it's super unfortunate how many Moroccans look like us. I walk by and go to work all the time, like, oh, there's my dad. Oh, there's my dad. There he is again. There's my dad. There's Steve. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> Okay, um, tell us a little bit about what your daily, what your day is like, and what kind of work you're doing, and that kind of thing. Yes. Oh my gosh, my days are very different from day to day. And according to the Peace Corps, you're working 24/7, which is kind of true. So I don't really have any. So I've been teaching English, and I don't really have any classes until the evenings. So my days are really open, but a lot of that time I'm making connections in the community. I'm getting a lot of stuff ready for my apartment. I've been doing so much, but um, for right now I've been teaching, gosh, five or six different English classes. Um, most of them are beginners classes, and I have one advanced class, um, and a lot of it is teaching them, you know, basic sentences, vocabulary, and then the advanced class we've been talking about, student loans. Um, <laughs> and then as, as time goes on, I'll start um, doing more activities as the school year winds down for Moroccans here, and I will teach music classes, I can do chess clubs, I'll be doing summer camps in the summer. Basically, I am a human Swiss army knife. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that sounds like a very full, full um, schedule. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, about your family. Are you living with a local family? I am living with a local family, and I absolutely love them to death. So I am living with um, my host brother and host sister in their apartment here in Taza. Their names are Azdeen and Fatima's daughter. They're about six or seven years older than I am, and we have a blast. All we do is just laugh and hang out, and it's tons and tons of fun. Um, they're the sweetest 
people I've ever come across in my life, and I absolutely adore them with all my heart and soul. Oh, that's great. We're glad to hear that. Um, do you have any transportation? Do you have a, a little scooter or anything like that? Do, I have, what's that? Any do you have a transportation of any kind, like personal transportation? Um, so as he has a car, which is awesome, we call it his Lamborghini, which is like a 1988 Volkswagen Jetta. Okay. <laughs> and... Um, in terms of getting around in the city, there are taxis, so that's how I get around to work, um, or I walk. And then if I'm traveling from city to city, there's a thing called a Grand Taxi, where I bargain for a seat, and I hopefully get one, and then I'm in a taxi with a whole bunch of strangers, <laughs> and I'm in there for three hours traveling to a new city. So <laughs> That's great. That's great. I think uh, when I talked to you before, you told me something that I found very interesting, was that... Uh, your your how you feel about being out there, like your safety, and you told me. Did, did you get the question? Did you get yeah. that? So I did. Yes. Yeah. So in terms of safety, I know everyone has questions about safety when you travel, especially when you're traveling to an African country, a Middle Eastern country. Um, I feel way safer here than I ever do in the United States. A yeah. thousand percent. Right, I, and I, I find that very interesting and, uh, and kind of sad for the United States, but I'm very happy for you and that you have that um, because it gives us a sense of peace. You know, we're, we're glad to hear that. Um, so tell me about traveling. How much traveling have you been able to do? I have no idea the answer to that question. I've done tons and tons of traveling, and I have more coming up. Um, I was living in a region in central Morocco for the first two months. I was there called Beni Malal. Um, and then uh, I traveled around that area a lot. I've seen a lot of the cities around there. I've seen the waterfalls. I've seen a lot of na um, um, national parks. And now I've done some traveling to Fez, which is an hour and a half nearby, and traveling around my city. And then in about a month's time, I'll be going to Marrakesh for um, training a week-long training that I have to attend to, and then uh, my host family and I are planning on doing a road trip, head up north to the coast, and then driving along the coast of Tangier, which I'm looking forward to, so. Oh, wow. That's... Tons of traveling. And then Spain's super close, so I'm definitely going to go to Spain. Yay, nice. Okay. <laughs> You'll like that. Okay. Um, now I'm going to ask if, does anybody want to ask Diego a question? Do we, would you... Oh, I can go down to you, but if you would, would like to ask Diego a question, please come here, up to me, and then it'll be a little bit quicker. Let me walk around the church. And here's, um, this is Elizabeth. Hi, Diego. Hi. I'm just kind of curious, what kinds of things are in place there that you were able to say you felt so much safer there than here? Is it access to to guns that we have here that's not there is it more military presence more police presence i'm just kind of curious that that's a that was a pretty pretty big statement and that was impressive and i just was curious what what's in place that you feel so much safer there than in the u.s well as many of you know i lived in albuquerque <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> legal to own a gun and you know as we've been seeing in the news recently the last week or two everything going on in California um, there's it's illegal to own a weapon here and it's kind of funny every time I hear a loud pop or bang I will be honest I get a little jumpy and all my Moroccan friends or counterparts like why are you getting jumpy that's normal and I'm like right right Morocco not America um, and then military wise you know so being here as an American and especially me living as an expat here, I um, am being constantly checked in on by the local police. They call me to just check in if everything's okay. They want me to inform them if I travel anywhere. Um, and then I, there is a person called an oven here who is basically assigned to me and they're basically my secret Moroccan ninja that 
Okay. Okay, great. I've never seen him and I'll never see him, but I think I'm rocking him. Wonderful. So that, that makes me uh, wonder, um, what is, you know, I'm curious about the perception of the U.S. from the Moroccan point of view. Um, what, what, have, what have you heard or what, what have you been told um, that, what do they think about America? The United States is wonderland. Everyone wants to come here. Everyone is asking me if I have a way to get them there. Um, that is that is top, top dream, top wishes for people to come here. Um, come here. Go there to America. Um, not that. Then the next stop is France. But um, America is number one on people's list. And everyone is really excited to learn that I am American and I have been treated so kindly and the hospitality, the hospitality here is, I can't even begin to describe it. And the amount of care and compassion and love that I've been shown here is beyond anything I've ever experienced in the States, to be honest, outside of, outside of you guys, outside of church. Um, and it's, it's really humbling. It's really, really humbling. And it, it really puts into perspective our country, what it still means to other people. And, how Americans have lost sight of that. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's very interesting it's awesome to see that perspective. Right. Um, are, as, um, so do they, they probably see you as a Christian, right? And do they ask you about your faith? So that's a very good question. Um, they don't, that's not really a question that actually comes up too often. Um, I, and the assumption when it comes to Americans is, you know, blonde hair, blue eyed. A lot of times I would make the assumption it is Christian, but I've never been asked that oh. um, directly. Um, I, what I will say is I haven't been very open or forthright as I would be in the States because it's actually illegal here to convert to a different belief or religion outside of Islam. So. I have to be very careful of how I approach conversations concerning beliefs and other religions. Mm. Okay. And um, just to ask, what the other Americans that are there, are they, how many do you b would say are uh, Christians or have a, have a Christian faith, you know, like, you know, that kind of thing, Catholic and such? Just me. <laughs> just you. <laughs> Okay, would, out of that. I would say I would say there are those who call themselves Christian, but walking and having a relationship with God and mm -hmm. and calling yourself a Christian are two different things. Right. Um, in terms of being connected with the body and being connected with other Christians here, um, that has been a new experience for me. Very isolated because it is just me here. I see. Um, and. Mm -hmm. With that, you know, what I would love to tell all of you guys is please, please, please do not take for granted that you guys get to meet every Sunday and mm -hmm. Wednesday and Saturday. Please, please, please don't. It is so important. And, you know, mm -hmm. that is a way God is drawing me here. But please do not take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Please, please don't. Very good. Thank you for that. Thank you very much for that. Uh, is there anybody else? Um, Roberta? This is Roberta Carter. Roberta. Hello, my dear. How are you? you? Look at you. You look great. Oh, we miss you so much. You know, I, I, um, I'm not taking for granted my quiet times, which I love. So you have your quiet times, and I love my fellowship of believers here, too. You just mentioned that. So what are you doing to help you stay in the Word, stay in fellowship, and grow in Him? Well, you know, get in the word um, and I have you know now that I'm in my final time and I'm not constantly training 24-7 I've been able to start to connect back more with people at church you know I'm looking at the live stream right now and I'm seeing Mike and Lily and Chrissy and Dave and I've been able to keep in touch with them Chrissy and Lily don't ever really leave me alone which <laughs> I love so much um, same thing with my same thing with my parents, same thing with um, Michelle out there. And when I was sick um, with COVID and Rabat, so many of you, so many of you reached out to me, and I needed that. And that's 
huge, you know? Um, and just being able to connect with people and know that people are praying for me and being able to get in the word, it's it's a whole different ball game when you don't have that kind of in-person accountability when it comes to your relationship. But um, it's incredible to see how God is not just the God of Ascent or Santa Fe or New Mexico. He's the God of this entire planet and universe and everything outside of it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well said. Well said. Is there anybody else who has a question? Would like to know something? Phil, could you please come up real quick? This is uh, Philip Griego. Phil! <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> hey, listen, uh, I was in Morocco when I was on the city council here in Santa Fe, and I was the vice mayor. And we went there, and I was there for a little over four weeks. And uh, we, if you get a chance, the city of Warzazan is a sister city to Santa Fe. And uh, if you can get a chance, you might want to go down there. It's a beautiful, beautiful city. And, it's, and the reason we made it a sister city because everything is made out of adobe. And, um, and, and so it was great. And I was in Fez and Marrakesh and, uh, and all those places there, but it was great. And the other thing that I, I did that was not really kosher with the, uh, with the embassy was I ate the food in the bazaars. You know, we used to go through bazaars, and they told me not to eat the food that was there. But I did anyway, and it was fine. So the only thing they, the only thing they told me to stay away from was the, um, uh, the water, just to drink the bottled water. But anyway, you have a great time there, because Warzazad is a great, I mean, uh, Morocco is a great place, and they're great people. But it's nice to see you. Good luck to you. God bless you. I love you too, brother. God bless you. Okay. Thank you, Diego. This is Michelle. Hey, kiddo. Question. One thing that we didn't talk about was how do they treat the women that are in the Peace Corps there different from the men? Is there the same kind of security for women? Absolutely so. Um, it's, you know, when it comes to Moroccan women, and when it comes to um, foreign women, it's definitely two different stories. There's definitely those very hard and defined gender roles, but Morocco overall, men and women, especially for visitors, is so, so safe. They go above and beyond to take care of visitors here, absolutely. It's, I've never I, I, I've never felt so safe in a country before, and I've, I've been blessed to travel around before, but I've definitely felt the safest here. Um, and for women, I know for other Peace Corps volunteers that I've talked to who are women, they have said the same thing. Okay. All right. So, does there anybody else have a question, comment? Steve, Cass. <laughs> <laughs> what? <way>. Okay. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Um, so hi, D. You're not mom. No, it's, you want to talk to mom? So I, I guess the only question I would have for you right now in regard to your host family, are you helping with the chores there and making your bed and <laughs> splitting wood, making sure everybody, you're contributing right to the household? <laughs> of course I am, of course I am. Just tell them who you are. Hey, brother, this is Nathan. How are you, Diego? Good, how are you, brother? And hey. Good, good. Thank you for reaching out to me like you have been too, man. It's, I've, it's been awesome. It's a beautiful thing to be a part of the body of Christ and to really embrace that idea of the connectedness we get, um, like the support system that we can have in that. It's amazing. But uh, what I wanted to ask kind of twofold, one being... Uh, what do you see as your current personal 
biggest challenges right now. And it's, it kind of goes along with that. How, how can we be praying for you uh, right now with, with where you're at? You know, I mean, I know there's, there's kind of a big picture scope to what you're doing there and everything else, but where, where Diego is today, what, what, where can we be with you? Definitely. Can you repeat the first question? What kind of challenges? I heard fitness challenges, and I was like, Nate. Uh, not, like yeah, where's your fitness challenge? No, d- just personal challenges. Well, Person, what, yeah. kind of, what, kind of what kind of personal challenges do you feel you have right now? You know. Personal challenges, and then how can you pray for me? Those both beautiful questions. Um, so I think <clears> the first kind of challenge... Augusta was going to ask him how we could pray for him, so I don't know if it's important for you to go back to him. Okay. Like I haven't before because I'm not connected to the body like I have been my whole life. Um, and, you know, I think I Nathan just asked her a question. Do not mind okay. sharing Is that my good? heart with you guys at all. You know, I always have. Um, so definitely have been struggling with the, um, with the kind of perception of what it means to be a missionary. Um, and knowing that I'm not necessarily here to be talking about Jesus, and I'm not here with a Christian organization. I'm not. Um, I'm not here necessarily doing missionary work as we all like to perceive it as. Um, and I actually had a really great conversation with someone really close to me this last week who said basically that. Being a missionary is just being there, being present, and showing Jesus' love. It's not always it's not always handing out a Bible and saying this is who Jesus is, but showing Jesus with, with who you are and through your actions, and that was something that really, really stuck with me. Um, so that's something that was definitely a personal challenge for me, and right now, you know, I think a continued challenge for me is just that wave of that comes and goes. I am a human yo-yo, and I have the highest of highs here and the lowest of lows here. Um, so definitely be praying for me through through that. And what I would say, just as a church, be praying for those opportunities where I can really start to talk about Jesus in those small little ways, um, where I can, you know, be that sort of impact and that that Christ needs me to be here. Um, it's a whole different sort of game here when it comes to being open about your faith and talking about it. So um, be praying for those opportunities that can come over the next next year and a half to two years that I'm going to be here. So definitely that would be something I'd pray for. And then just, um, I want to know how I can be praying for my church back home. I want to know how I can be praying for you guys. So please, please tell me how. Hey Diego, how are you? Hi. Yeah, I wanted to. Hey Diego, hey. Can you? <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to ask, how have you seen the Lord work in your life, and how have you grown? Like. I don't have an answer to that right now because so that's, in that's the, the last that question. Right okay, now, so okay, I'll just. I'm in the middle of the growth, and I'm in the middle of this work right now, and I don't. I may not necessarily know exactly to what it's gonna be for, but I know he's doing so much in my life right now because of it. Um, I have my I have my ideas and beliefs, and I know. I, I'm fairly confident in the direction that he is taking me through with Morocco, you but, question? you know, I just, I just want to leave that up to him and, and his will. So that's that's my answer to that. I know that's kind of a non-answer, but that's the best answer I can give. <laughs> mm. Um, Hi, Diego. It's Bethany. Hey, Bethany. Yeah. Um, You know, it's a lot. Anyway, but... Um, I think one question everyone is dying to know, um, how is the food over there? (laughs) 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 Guys, the food is amazing. It's so, so good. Um, 
um, everything. It, everything is so super fresh here. Everything is organic because it's grown here, here, and everything is so cheap. My mom was telling me that eggs are like nine dollars now. Guys, that's rough. I think for we bought a whole like flat of eggs for maybe like sixty cents, uh, and we bought like three, four kilos of vegetables here, and it was like three dollars. Um, and then oh gosh, couscous, tagine, harira, like. Come to Morocco. You just need to come to Morocco. I can't even begin to explain the food. It's so good. I, I cry. I like cry at the thought of it. It's <laughs> That's great to hear, Diego. And I, we're getting close to noontime here, so I know a lot of people are starting to get an appetite for. <laughs> so, so maybe a Jambo Cafe is going to get filled up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to have to get, to, this is, we're at the end of our time here, and um, yeah, and so we want to pray for you um, now as, uh, as we sign off, so let me go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, uh, we give you all honor and glory, Lord Jesus. Um, thank you for your love for us, and thank you for our brother Diego, and uh, we just are in awe of his willingness to go out into the world and to love this uh, people and to um, show your love, Lord God. And I just pray, Lord, you'll watch over him and guard him and protect him, Lord God. And um, just give him discernment, Lord, as he reads your word, Lord, speak to him. Speak to him those words that will comfort him, will encourage him, will build him up, Lord. And um, will, he will uh, draw closer to you, Lord, through your word, through his study in your word, his uh, quiet time with you, Lord God, that you minister to him through the many ways that you are able to do that, Lord, uh, through our connection with him, through um, his connection with the people there, Lord, uh, all these different things that your Holy Spirit, Lord, just be strong in him that it be awakened, Lord, to the, the way you're leading him. And, um, and we thank you, Father, for, for watching over him. We thank you for the opportunities that you will bring to him, Lord, and that he will um, have that, that chance to, to love these people the way your son um, loves his creation. Thank you, Father God, for all you're doing. And um, we just pray again to protect our brother, keep him safe, and uh, watch over him, Lord. And uh, fill him to the brim with, your, with joy everlasting, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. I love you all so, so much. Haiti, hey, it's your favorite uncle. Are you still on? Yeah. yeah. Oh man, what a. I see a lot of you in the streets here too. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. My my wife calls me Shiku Booty um, whenever we're at the house. <laughs> just kidding. No, I'm not. That's her pet name for me. But hey, just want you to know, D, we love you. Um, we love you so much, and we're so um, grateful to the Lord for how he's using you. And um, we're, we're praying for you, brother. We love you. Mom, and, uh, Dad, I love you both so, so much, too. <laughs> yeah. I know I tease you guys a lot, and I know hurt your feelings, but I just do it because I love you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk to you soon, all right? We'll, we'll be I in touch. One of the cool things, everybody, just, just know this, every Sunday morning when we have prayer in the room next door at 9 o'clock, um, he's joining us. So um, if you want to continue to hear his voice, and you won't see his face, but you'll get to hear his voice at least, because, yeah, you do look Moroccan. Uh, <laughs> uh, but what a blessing that is, right? So um, love you, D, and uh, we will be in touch. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye. Wasn't that awesome? Yeah. So, um, Jay, if you want to bring up the next slide, this is where we're at in our service. Um, very special 
very unique time, these uh, fifth Sundays for this body. Uh, so encouraging to see this young man be where he's at and committing faithfully to the Lord Jesus Christ in his mission and what, where God has placed him in his journey in this period in his life. And um, none of us would be where we're at had the Lord not done what he did for us 2,000 years ago. And that's what this part of our service is about. Um, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to just give you a quick thought and overview about the significance and the meaning of the Lord's Supper. Then we're going to turn it over to the praise team to lead us in some... Uh, and some music to be mindful of the blood, um, his body broken for us, and um, then we'll gather together and um, just uh, look back as we um, share these elements together. First Corinthians chapter number 11 is our proof text for what Paul is revealing to the body of Christ, to the church, relative to this very significant ordinance. Uh, those of you that have been a part of this church for a while now, and those of you that have been through discipleship or are going through discipleship, in our Discipleship One tool, we impart to you and share to, with you the importance of these ordinances. And there's only two that are left to the body of Christ in the church age. Baptism, which is our lesson three, and the Lord's Supper, which is our lesson number 13. And um, we live under grace. And because of what Christ did for you and for me on that cross, we're able to use our baptism is really, and I always share this with those that are getting baptized, this is your first sermon as a follower of Jesus to reveal and to show the world that you've chosen to follow him. And then the Lord's Supper is more inward, more internal, where we're able together to show the world what Jesus means to us in terms of how he died for us. So there's always that perfect balance in the scriptures and this amazing chapter begins with the importance of following Christ. If you look at the first verse, Paul says in verse number one, Be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. What a profound truth that is, because when we talk about discipleship in this church and where we teach these ordinances, that's all we're saying to those that are choosing to follow Christ is we want you to know, we want you to know and realize that what we're about to experience together here in a few minutes has nothing to do with the sacrament, has nothing to do with religion, it has everything to do about remembering what he did for us. That is the significance of the Lord's Supper. So Paul says, be ye followers of me, even as I am also of Christ. And he says in the second verse, now I praise you, brethren. And he's writing to a church, mind you, a church just like ours, that ye remember me in all things. And he says this next, and that ye keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. He only delivered two ordinances. The importance of baptism and its significance. Baptism, and those of you that have been in our church, well, we know that baptism doesn't save you, but baptism is that first act of obedience where you're telling the world, man, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. And then today we come together, and this is why this is special. Because although baptism is an individual choice and an individual decision and an individual manifestation of you choosing to follow Jesus, this, is, this particular ordinance is about doing something profound together. Before he leaves his disciples, before he prepares to depart, he brings them together. And the very first thing he does with them is he breaks bread, John chapter 14. But before he breaks bread, he says to them in the first three verses of the gospel of John 14, he says, reminding them and revealing to them that it's going to get crazy. 
their lives are going to get chaotic knowing that he was going to go to the cross and ultimately depart this planet physically. He says to them, let not your heart be troubled. For if you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I love this promise. I go to prepare a place for you. What a great way to start our preparation of a people for the Blessed Hope series starting next week. Because one of the, one of the things that we're going to be driving home is the importance of the significance of preparing you for his return. Right now, today, he's preparing a place for you, personally. And he's preparing that place. We've been left here in this broken, chaotic world. But he says to us, to let, let not our hearts be troubled. For if you believe in God, believe also in me. And that is the key to anything and everything that we ought to be doing in this church and experiencing in this church. He goes on, he says to them in the third verse, and if I go and prepare a place for you, and I love this, he says to them next, I will, not I might, not I shall, but I will come again. I'm telling you, church, he's coming back. I don't know exactly when, but as I shared with you a couple weeks ago when we were doing our vision casting, we're going to plan like he's not coming back for years, but we need to live like he's coming back today. That's my hope and my prayer for each and every one of you. We're going to talk about that somewhat extensively next week and what the word of God reveals to us about his return. Because we need and I pray and I hope that every one of us are prepared for that day. So that we stand and when we stand before him, he can say to us, well done, and he's not going to say, well done, my good and faithful pastor or state employee or forest service dude or missionary to Morocco or Peace Corps guy. He's not going to say any of that. He's going to ask or he's going to reveal, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's all of us. Because after he has this meal with these guys like we're going to experience here together in a few minutes. You know the thing that he did next, which is so profound in the 12th verse of the Gospel of John. He took a dish and he took a cloth and he washed his disciples' feet. That's our Lord. That's our Lord. That's our purpose. That's our mission. And I'm excited for this young man because I know his heart. And he's going to see and you're going to see some young Muslim people come to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ because of his testimony. I believe that wholeheartedly. So what a great Sunday, man, to be able to see his face and listen to what God's doing, but also be able to come together and be mindful of our purpose and our mission. And I'm going to remind you again, and that is simply to see the law saved and the saved discipled. That's why you're here. So it's a special day because we're hearing about what it means to evangelize in Diego's testimony. And then at the end of our time together here, as we celebrate the Lord's Supper together, we're going to recognize some folks that have completed discipleship, that have taken that verse First verse in 1 Corinthians to heart where Paul said, be ye followers of me as I follow Christ. So have your Bibles. Go ahead and turn with me to the 11th chapter. That's where we're going to be as soon as we're done with our song service. Are we going to do that song? Okay, I'm sorry, Mike. Okay. I guess Nathan's going to. Perfect. Okay. Larry, I'm going to ask you to come up. Larry Socio. Hey, uh, Jay or Janine, can I get you to get the house lights down a little bit just to kind of 
set the tone for our time together here tonight, this morning, I mean. <laughs> you know, one of the things that is revealed to us in this passage is the importance and the significance of examining our hearts. And I would pray and I would hope that we wouldn't partake of these elements without really checking ourselves. And in our church, several years ago, we chose to do what is referred to, often referred to in Christianity as an open communion, meaning we want to involve and include anybody and everybody. But I would say to you that if you're not where perhaps you need to be spiritually, Let's take this time, these next few minutes together to just really examine our hearts and get our hearts right, just like David did in that 51st chapter of Psalms before we take and consider the seriousness of the Lord's table. Okay, thank you. Hi, can I have the deacons come up and get the elements distributed, please? If you look closely at the elements that we're passing out, they're packaged nicely in this little package with the bread, the little piece of unleavened bread on the upper part of the cup. So if you want to go ahead and start unwrapping, that would be fine. We all just prepare. Examine, prepare our hearts.
you'd like to follow along, we're going to move down the chapter of 1 Corinthians 11. And um, we'll be looking at Paul's words to this church in Corinth, reminding them and revealing to them the very experience just some few years earlier that Jesus had with his disciples. And for those of you that <clears throat> might have a red letter Bible in your possession or in your hands, you'll see Paul's words here in red. He's quoting Jesus verbatim as he brought his disciples together to reveal to them what he was about to go through. In that part of the experience, they were looking forward and reminding them that he was going to leave and this was going to play out. But for you and for me in the New Testament, we're looking back. We're looking backward to never, ever forget what Jesus Christ did for you and for me. It says in the first, in the 23rd verse, Paul's words, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, and before I quote the Lord Jesus, I wanted to ask Larry to pray. Lord, your word reminds us of so many things about you and your life, and your sacrifice, our need for you, our relationship with you. And we thank you, Lord, that you came to this world that you created, and you were in the world. And though the world did not recognize you, we recognize you. You came to those who were your own. And though your own did not receive you, we receive you. And you give us right. You give us power to become sons and daughters of God. We thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice, for the stripes you took, for the pain you received, for the humility you showed. And we bless you and we praise you as we remember your sacrifice. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Paul goes on and he shares the Lord's words to the church in Corinth. This, this take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Take and eat. And after the same manner, also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, Again, Lord, as we continue in our remembrance, we look to your word. You tell us in Leviticus and again in Hebrews that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. We sang songs already today, Lord, that by your blood we were cleansed. Your red blood washed us whiter than snow. It makes us new creatures. You have thrown from yourself our sins as far as the east is from the west. And we thank you, Lord, for shedding your blood on the cross, understanding that if righteousness could be gained by works, then you died for nothing. But we know you died for us, and it's through your sacrifice, it's through your shed blood, 
that we have righteousness to stand before your heavenly Father. And we look for the day when you will take us to be where you are, that you are preparing for us now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Take, take, take and drink. Paul goes on and he shares a very significant thought in bringing the Lord's table, the Lord's Supper to a close. He says this in the 26th verse, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, I love this, folks. This is what 2023 is all about for Ascent Bible Church. He says, you do show the Lord's death till he come. I pray that this is our last fifth Sunday together. But if not, I'll see you in April. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? If not, we'll do it again, and we'll do it again till the day he comes. But I'm telling you, folks, he's coming back. He's coming back. Thank you. Church, we want to sing. Jesus for the blood together with you. Just a couple of choruses of that. Please join us as we don't just sing words for the point of making music. We sing words for the purpose of praising our God, for speaking the truth of who he is and what we feel about him. We just want to love him and say thank you to him.
is good. He is God. Good God Almighty. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the new time. Praise Him when the sun goes down. Love him in the morning, love him in the noon time, love him when the sun goes down. The God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Praise in your name no matter what comes. Cause I know where I'd be without your mercy. So I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs. All righty. Um, hey, folks, we're almost done, I promise. Yeah, we say that every Sunday, right? No, this is, this is really, really important, that what we're about to share. Um, just want to recognize and let you know that there's some very, very um, um, cool things happening in this church. And I'm so grateful for those of you that have stepped up to disciple somebody else and what a blessing it is and to be able to um to be able to see god's hand at work at ascent bible church by simply applying what we heard today in first corinthians 11 1 when paul said be ye followers of me as i follow christ so this obscure figure holding up the cross is the mentor and behind them are some of the people that this person discipled, and that's all Paul did with Timothy, with Titus, and a whole bunch of other folks in his life, and this is really what we're about at Ascent, and we would be remiss if we didn't recognize some of the folks that, um, that finished. Some of you a few months ago, but we only do this whenever we have a Lord's Supper, so it's kind of a, a large window sometimes, but with that said, these are the folks. We got the Skoogs. Could I have all the Skoogs come up? Are they in the bathroom? Oh, okay. Maybe not. Um, let's start. We'll, we'll wait till. Can you bring them up as soon as they get here? Jagozi Engineer, can you guys come up? And by the way, just you guys that are on this list, on this slide, you are getting a gift. See me right after church because um, I'm going to let you pick which car in the parking lot you guys want. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. We do have a really special gift for you guys, but I want to just have Larry and Maggie come up real quick and just share their heart about this amazing connection. And um, we call it our Nigerian connection. These are our first Nigerian brothers and sisters that showed up one day, a year ago, August, huh? Yeah. And here they are. And um, we're praying that one day we could... Uh, put all of us on on the video, right? Go ahead, Larry. Okay, this is my son that I never had. <laughs> We've had a special connection with the Abenifis since day one. And it was so great to be able to take them through discipleship because I learned that in Nigeria, their faith is so much stronger 
than mine is because they have to trust the Lord for everything all the time, every day, and they just walk by faith and not by sight. It, it was, it's been so tremendous to get to know them and their children. Along with all the Nigerians, it's just been a special treat. So God bless you guys. Do you have anything you want to say? Yes. Okay, but you're not allowed to give it to Chinyuri because she really preaches for a long time. <laughs> Um, I just want to use this opportunity to say thank you for the church, for an opportunity and privilege to go through this discipleship. And I want to encourage each and every one of us, it's a very good thing you need to do. It gives you time to ask questions. There's so much connection when you go through the Bible and the study. It's a wonderful time we had together with um, Maggie and Larry. And each Thursday, we keep on looking forward to see them. Even uh, the discipleship class has ended, but every Thursday is always a reminder for us that we're supposed to stay together with them. It gives you that um, relationship. It makes you understand why we are here together as human beings. So I encourage each and every one of you that you need to come on board and go through this discipleship. It's a wonderful thing. It's an experience to take you to another dimension that you will not really understand where you're going to. But I want you to use this opportunity to tell you, Lali, we love you. Mm. Yeah. Maggie, we love you. Thank you for the prayers. Thank you for the emotional support. Thank you for the physical support. Um, like you said, he's my dad. Mm. And I call him dad. It doesn't matter the color, but he's really a dad. And I love you so much, sir. So, Janir, you want to share a couple thoughts? We good? Okay. Oh, no, no, don't let me stop you. <laughs> don't let me stop you. I was just teasing. Praise the Lord. I just want to say thank you to Larry and Maggie. We moved to Rancho in August, but we didn't come to, okay, we met just twice in church, but they've been driving every Thursday to come see us at home for the discipleship class. It's really a big deal for us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they come with lunch, breakfast, whatever you want to call it. They've been there all the way. Thank you, and may you remain blessed. I just want to say that it was a great experience working with uh, Janeri and John. And anyway, I look forward to many more times together. Mark and Carrie, are you, are you guys okay coming up? You want to stay with Augusta? What are your thoughts? Okay, come on up. So Maggie and I have been blessed upon blessings because not only did we get to do Chigozi and Chinyuri, but we got to do Mark and Karen too. And during a good portion of the time with them, Karen was going through some very, very heavy duty treatment for her cancers. And you can look at her now and you can see that the treatments are having positive effects. What you don't see is that when those we love suffer, we suffer too. And Mark went through some very, very heavy things as well. But they stuck with it. They were faithful. And we got through the lessons. 
and had tremendous, tremendous fellowship doing so. And I, I just want to say, you guys, you taught me how to be joyful in tough times. So thank you for that. It's been a pleasure to take you through discipleship. That was a real blessing. Would you like to say anything? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's God. It's the Lord, <laughs> totally sure. God. And, um, you know, he's my healer. So whatever treatments, whatever, you know, whatever improves my health, you know, he's my healer. And if he wants to use conventional or alternative, whatever it is, and it's he gets the glory. Yeah. And so that's kind of a side note. But you guys have been amazing. And we really appreciate all your time and your effort and yeah. the extra. Uh, we, we've just gotten extra things um, through scripture as we've gone through it that have just made it so much more, uh, I don't know, three-dimensional, you yeah. know, as we go through, you know, the lesson, so. You're amazing. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you don't have to. I know. No, it was, it was an amazing time of fellowship. It was 16 amazing lessons on the importance of God being first in our lives. Um, we finished our 16th lesson, but the day before we had summit. <laughs> and Clyde took us to uh, First Thessalonians, I think. Anyway, First Timothy. First Timothy. And the importance of being spotless and blameless. And <clears throat> during that time, it was just like, okay, spotless and blameless, that's for deacons. No, it's not. It's for all of us. Um, spotless and without wrinkle because God knew us before we were in the womb. He numbered our days. And what we do in between is our testimony. And there's nothing more important than our testimony. You only get one shot at it. We all blow it from time to time, but we have that ability to go before the Lord and confess our sins and get right again. But I would highly recommend, if you haven't been discipled, get discipled. It'll take you deeper. If you're lucky, you'll get these two. If you're not, you'll get us. <laughs> but uh, we just love this church. We love the body. We love the leadership. We love the fellowship. And... Uh, we love all of you, too. Thanks. Oh, come on. Say something. What do you mean to say? So get off the stage, Mark. <laughs> get off the stage, Mark. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Um, yeah, well, you got one more. Hey, Leonard, do you want to wait on Caroline? What are your thoughts? Let's do that, because we'll, we, we'll do it like in the next week or two, okay, right after church, because there's a few folks that fell ill today, um, who was, who's also was scheduled to get uh, recognized today, uh, Maureen Dekarska, so uh, a couple others, Gusta's back, praise God, right, she wasn't feeling well earlier, but she is now, Ollie, disciple Augusta, here you guys go. Augusta, I just want you to know that I went into this when when the Lord spoke to Pastor John and told him that he was placing me with you. That was really a wonderful time for me because I've loved you since you were a little baby that you would go to church with your mommy and daddy. And um, I took this responsibility um, from the Lord and... I went in there thinking I was going to teach you something, but boy, did I learn from you. <laughs> and you are my spiritual daughter, and I love you, and I'll always be here for you. God bless you, baby. Thank you. It's been such a privilege to be able to be here and to be part of the discipleship program and to learn. Um, it's such a privilege to be here and to learn part of the discipleship program and to get to know so many of you to be connected with people I've known growing up like Miss Ollie um, and God is just so good 
So thankful to him. Thank you, Lord. I didn't want to speak first. I wanted you to speak first. I waited. Um, the Lord, the Lord had me wait three years to get my first disciple, and this is who He brought to me. And um, I don't know what to say. I, I have so many thoughts, but one of the things I want to say is that God knew who I should be discipling. And uh, you continue to grow in the Lord and in the strength of his might and power. You are faithful. You are kind. You're hospitable. You continue to be faithful. And um, what you've shown me is that the way that you're growing in the Lord is through your daily devotion and time with him. And uh, one of the things we got to share together also was uh, we learned, I taught her how to use the Strong's Concordance, and that was a, a benefit of just being together, spending time together. And I just want to thank the Lord. I want to thank my dear Vanita for who she is and how she just, she's pliable, and she's going to continue to work to grow in the ways of the Lord. Thank you. I love you, Roberta, and um, it's not because I'm sad, it's just, it's my heart. I came through a lot to get here, and my husband passed away. I, my neighbors next door is Jan and Bill, and um, I was over there by learning how to read the Bible. And she taught me a lot. And when my husband passed away, I said, could you take me to church? Because I hadn't been to church for years. And um, I fell in love with this church. I fell in love with everybody here. And I thank God that I am here. Because without him, I am nothing. But with him, I'm everything I can be. And I'm going to keep growing and nobody, Satan's been attacking for the last year, as what you see now. And he's not going to stop me. Nobody's going to stop me. Thank you. Van and Larry. Larry and Van. Larry's discipling the whole church by himself. <laughs> <laughs> And again, I just want to let you know that we're going to wait. Bernadette, if you're okay with it, we're going to wait on Sylvia to be here because I want you guys to be up here together. And, uh, but, uh, but meet me in the back, those of you that we recognize today, because, again, we need to get those, um, those gifts ready for you guys. Okay. Well, one of the advantages of being retired is that you have enough time to do the important things in life. And I was fortunate enough to have Van as a disciple. He was faithful. He worked hard on the lessons. He came with tough questions, got me to think through for some very powerful answers of questions that I hadn't asked before. So I just want to thank you for the part that you played in our joint discipleship. Thanks, Larry. There's so much buzzing through my head, and I prayed as I often have to pray anyway. God, just let me say only what you want me to say. <laughs> um, first of all, I'd like to ask you to forgive me the way I'm dressed. Always. My tuxedo is still in storage, so, but it won't be for long. Uh, that's one of the things, uh, one of the longings I've had that is a uh, tree of life, and that's Proverbs 13, 12. Uh, hope deferred makes the heart sick, 
but a logging fulfilled is a tree of life. So that's one, not very significant compared to my discipleship with this man. Uh, for decades, and I'm not being hyperbolic, for decades I have longed for, looked forward to discipleship, and I've been a Christian for decades. Uh, it finally happened, and it happened here, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, also to be part of a good church, that's been another um, longing fulfilled, and that's, that's you. Uh, this, is, this is a church of, you are a church, in my opinion, of cutting edge love. Cutting edge love. In my experience, you have been right there, many of you, at the time I have needed someone to be there. And I really appreciate that. Along those lines, I'm about to wrap up, is uh, uh, interesting to hear Diego today. Uh, I thought of him this morning, and I pray for him. Um, he seems to be a man who takes uh, Psalm 119, 165, verse 165 to heart, which John has uh, spoken of before. Uh, if you allow me, blessed are they, or great peace have they who love your law. Nothing shall offend them. Thank you. All right, folks, thank you so much for being so patient. Appreciate each and every one of you. We love you, and uh, see you next week as we kick off. No. no. Oh, the announcements? We got a ton of announcements. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. You don't understand 70. That's for you guys from last week. <laughs> okay. We do. We got a ton of announcements. So I even brought up the clicker so I can try to control this myself. If you are a visitor today, you should have received a visitor's packet that has information in it. It's got a couple light gifts for you. It's got a blue card. It's got a pink card. Fill out the blue card. Let us know you were here. Drop it in the offering box at the center of the sanctuary just off the carpet. If you have a prayer, drop that in there as well. Anybody in the congregation can do that. Starting Wednesday. In fact, John talked about a new sermon series in Thessalonians. Pastor Mike is going to start doing a new series on Wednesday, the first Wednesday of each month on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Read about it in the new communique, which came out today for February. We got both Thessalonians and the gifts of the Holy Spirit discussed in here. So there's no reason why you shouldn't know what's coming up. There's so many things about the Holy Spirit that people do not understand or they misunderstand. Be part of this Wednesday night series. First Wednesday of every month, it's going to go all the way into summer for sure because there's a ton of things to understand. God is love, February communique. There's more stuff in there than just that. Pick one up if you haven't already. There's some at the table on the right as you go out the door. There's also in the box in the right in the lobby. The weekend to remember is coming up in the middle of February, February 17th to 19th. Do we still have scholarships available? Still have scholarships available. Two, two scholarships. So do not let the cost of the conference keep you from going. If you want to improve your marriage or you want to just celebrate a great marriage, there's something for everybody in that weekend. So come see either the Carters. Raise your hands, please. Pastor John or me, if you want to be part of that weekend. Response forms due today. Also on the table, just before you go through the double doors, there's a black plastic holder you can drop your response forms in. If for some reason you did not remember to bring them, and I intentionally didn't send out an e-blast, but if you didn't remember to bring them or you're still working on them, you can bring them next week as well. 
but we are going to start making contact very quickly based on your response forms. So if you don't have one, you can go online to ascentbible.church, select publications, and they are in the second row down on the left, both the booklet and the response forms. 2022 giving statements have gone out. If you haven't received yours yet, you should before the 1st of February, which I think is Thursday. If you haven't received it by then, it's because we don't have the right mailing address for you. See Sylvia Barella or email her at sylvia.barella at ascentbible.com. CareNet Baby Bottle Drive starts today. It goes until February 19th, I believe it is. And next week, we will have a testimony about CareNet slash Desert Rose. So you can look forward to that. Today, after service, we are going to have coffee and cookies. So you can stick around, enjoy the snack, enjoy each other's company like you did before the service started. Continue your discussions. Two sessions of discipleship. You gotta attend both of them. They start next Sunday and continue the following Sunday. There's a sign up list on the counter to your left as you depart. And uh, I think we have 11 people signed up already. Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men. We are not caretakers of the aquarium. Okay, we are fishers of men. To that end, we have, we have tracks, we have business cards upon which you can write your name and phone number. You should take some of these and hand them out to people that you meet throughout the week. We are looking to let people know that if they are not saved, they are in trouble. We have the words of eternal life because we have Jesus Christ. And we've, we've handed out these track cards before, and when we try to give them a second time, people say, well, I already got one. Yeah, that's because they're not for you. They're for the people who don't have them. Take three or four or five with you. You don't have to take 100. If you go into a restaurant, Leave it on the table with a generous tip. I, I don't really care how you do that, but there are people who need to know what's on this card. And if you have made a face-to-face a, a -face connection with somebody, take one of the cards, the business cards, write your name, your personal phone number on it. On the back is a map to our location. And on the, on the uh, tract, there's contact information, including our website. We are serious about seeing the lost saved. And we're as serious about that as we are about seeing the saved discipled. We're getting ready to put together a complete training package for those of you who are interested in how do I, how do I start the conversation? How do I throw that lure out to see if as a fisher of men, I can draw somebody in to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're getting very serious about this here because time is getting short and we have to redeem the time because the days are evil. CPR class. We are going to have a CPR class. I think it's scheduled right now for March 11th. It may be on a different date. We will let you know. We got a month to figure that out. There's going to be a sign-up sheet. Is it already here, the sign-up sheet? Sign-up sheet right next to the discipleship, too. Two for one. Two for the price of one. Get them both. First, first aid and CPR. That's it. Nobody else is coming up after me, so you guys really do get to wrap it up right now. Thanks for being here. God bless you. Have a great week.